In this week, Signal Emitted, a AAA game starts using Godot, JetBrains ID Rider improved Godot support, the last beta release for Godot 4.5 has arrived, we'll take a look at the Godot Wild Jam Minute, and of course we have our Creator Spotlight, our Game of the Week, Tool of the Week and Tip of the Week. Welcome to Signal Emitted, your weekly news show for Godot related news. I'm Voilin, and let's start with a AAA game is using Godot? Yeah. A triple A game is using Godot. Not in the way that you might expect, but yeah, it still sounds strange. But it's true. Battlefield 6 is using Godot for letting users create their own levels, their own maps. In a recent video from the Battlefield YouTube channel, we can see that the map editor is actually Godot 4.4.1 with some add-ons. At first I thought this might be a custom build, but looking further at it, it just states 4.4.1 and no different like characters or something next to the version number and there is an add-ons folder so it's just Godot with some add-ons probably a GD extension or something to make everything work and of course it probably also has the assets for like the whole building stuff so yeah now there's not too much news about it right now but I felt that it needed to be mentioned that Godot is used in this kind of a way by a triple A game publisher which I feel is kind of big news in a very positive way. This is both positive for creators and Godot because people making maps will be able to get used to Godot and maybe start working on actual games instead of just maps. Yeah, all by all, like, there's probably a lot more positive sides about this, but this is kind of good news, in my opinion. And next up, the sponsor plug, but please don't skip it because Gozen, my video editor that I'm making in Godot, has reached version 0.4 alpha. And the next couple of uh, 0.4 releases, like everything under 0.4, will be the last alpha. Version 0.5 will mark the beta period. From then on, um, basically Gozen will be in beta and I am still planning on releasing the full version of Gozen by December this year. Gozen, this video editor, is fully open source and there will be a link to the GitHub repo below. And yeah, check it out. If you want to support the video editor and my work, like these videos and such, please visit my coffee page and consider becoming a member. If you become a member, you'll get access to weekly articles and free access to all my items in the coffee shop. Sponsorship over. Also, if you want to become a sponsor of this show, link in the description. And then next up, we have our creator of the week, the creator spotlight. And for this week, I chose YouTube channel Twebble, and I hope I pronounced that name correctly, but I think I do. This YouTuber makes videos ranging from tutorials on core mechanics of Godot, of the Godot engine, to tutorials of more game mechanics. He has a lot of tutorials about all kinds of Godot and game related topics, with most of his focus being on GD scripts specifically and 2D related um, topics. He's not a small creator sitting at 13,000 subscribers, but he's a channel which is worth checking out, especially to get good advice on how to improve your scripting in GD script. Check him out, subscribe to him, there's a link in the description. And then some more big news about big companies. Ryder, an ID from JetBrains, yeah, the JetBrains, released a new release candidate which has some very good improvements for the Godot side of things. There's a smarter auto-completion now, there's control click navigation, rename refactoring, fine usages, a scene preview tool with an interactive tree, there's performance monitors as well and some more stuff. In the beginning of this year there was another release candidate which introduced hot reloading or at least like improved hot reloading and support for the UID system when refactoring projects. It is great to see that the Rider ID is having more and more and better and better support for Godot as time goes on. Because in the beginning when Godot support was introduced using Rider with Godot in the very beginning of the Godot support it was not great. This ID is also free for non-commercial use and if you're developing an open source software like I am with my video editor, you can actually get all of JetBrain programs for free for you and your team. I personally like it when companies support open source creators and their IDEs are some of the best available and also one of the most polished. Let's hope their Godot support implementation keeps improving as time goes on. Also, I'm not supported by JetBrains. I just really like what they're doing and I really think their IDEs are quite polished. And then there's some more news about Godot. But yeah, it's just a better release for version 4.5. In total, 170 commits have been made, but this update does only consist out of 
bug fixes, so there's not really much to talk about. I have actually switched to 4.5 beta releases because of some bugs with uh, 4.4.1 release, kind of like LSP issues. But I can say so far I have not had any crashes and 4.5 beta 3 has been very stable for me. And then the 83rd Godot Wild Jam is over and there were 192 entries for this month's team, which was Consume. The winning game for last month's game jam is Numfrogs, a kind of tower defense game in which you give frogs different types of food to turn them into different towers to get rid of all the flies. You can mix your food to create more powerful food and this game was made in just nine days. Give it a try on Ace.io it's fun to play and also available for web, Linux, Windows and macOS. A link to the itch.io page will be in the description as usual. Also for the people who are not aware, the GMTK jam is going on right now. There are two and a half days remaining at this point of filming. So by the time this video goes out, two days remaining. If you still want to join the GMTK game jam, do it now. And then some news from Apple Lens. So got? So go? I have no idea how to pronounce that name, but it's now free for students. People who don't know what XoGo is, it's an iPad port for the Godot editor. So you can actually make games with Godot, but on an iPad. Now, Xodo, XoGo, I still don't know how to pronounce it, got released some time ago, but since recent, like since recently, they started offering free access for students. Although it is the Godot editor, the UI is quite different. It's more just to help making games on iPads and the UI does look very nice and very polished. And although at first the idea of developing games on the tablet sounds kind of inconvenient, it does look like they find a very good balance in making it possible, convenient and enjoyable with their UI style. So yeah, if you're an iPad user and for some reason you want to make games on an iPad and you're a student, try it out. I won't try to pronounce the name again. And before going to the game of the week, tool of the week and tip of the week, here is a Reddit post from Mr. Eleptic. The game is literally about running a coffee shop or rather running in a coffee shop. You sprint through your shop in this high speed coffee shop management game. The name of this game is Hyper Cafe and it was made for the Shovel Game Jam. And right now it's at version 0.06. It is available on Ezatio to play, but from what I can read from his comments, he is not really thinking of making it into a full game, but who knows, maybe he will. And then for game of the week, there is Backpack Battles. This is an auto battling game in which you're fighting depends on what you have in your backpack and how it is like put inside of your backpack. Buy and craft powerful weapons and try to fit them all nicely inside of your backpack. The way you place your items has a big impact on your fights. Backpack Battles is a fun and strategic game and it is available on Steam right now with a temporary discount until August 6th. So check it out in the description below. And then for Tool of the Week, yes, no add-on of the week, I present you Godot Pixel Renderer. This is an open source tool which helps you to turn your 3D objects, models, into pixel art. Not only can you get your 3D models in pixel art, but you can also get the normal maps, the specular maps, and there are also a lot of adjustments you can make to the colors and yeah, everything. Like it's a very well made tool, a very helpful tool. If you're good at 3D and you want to make pixel art, but you can't really make pixel art because you're better at 3D. This is kind of a perfect tool for those type of people like me, by example. <laughs> it is open source and you can build it yourself from scratch through cloning the GitHub repo, or you can get the compiled version through is.io for just $5, which helps out the creator and for open source software, I would always recommend doing that because then you're directly supporting the work of that creator. Check it out, there's a link in the description to his repo. And then for the last topic, we have our usual tip of the week and I present to you Pattern guards and the when keyword. This can come in handy in a couple of situations. So yeah, let's take a look. So here we are again in our test room with a button. This time the button does something else. So let's take a look at our script. First of all, let's start with this class. So I made a class test and it has a variable called x, which is 10. Now, if we take a look over here, you may see the match statement, which, well, you probably know. But what you probably did not know is that you can do this. So I say var t here, which basically puts test inside of this variable. So var t when t.x is 10, then it prints working. 
same for point. Point is a two element array. So we have our two elements. First of all, if it's zero, zero, it will print origin. If only the right side is zero, then it will say point on X axis. For the opposite, it will say point on Y axis. And then here we have the var X again. So basically what this does is it takes the first value and it puts it in the variable X. And again, underscore, we kind of ignore this number then. And then we do when X is under zero. Basically the X axis is negative. Same for y is negative. And I just realized these are kind of switched around. This will be x, this will be y. But yeah, that, that's not take that in mind. But you can also do it for both. So we have var x, var y. When y and x are the same, that we say it's online. And so on, and so on. And then just for the default. So for the default, you can basically do this. But if you want to have access to these numbers, um, like separately, you use this. So var x, var y. And we have this. So yeah, this is first at first kind of difficult to understand, like kind of confusing to understand. But once you get the hang of this, it could actually come in handy in a couple of projects. If I run this by example, we will see it prints working. And the reason why point does not print is because we made this into a packed int array. So if it changes to an array, then this one should also work. So if we do this, it says working origin. So yeah. You kind of need to be careful with how you define the different arrays because packed byte uh, packed int arrays are not the same as normal arrays. So yeah, anyway, that is tip of the week: how to use the when keyword in a match statement. And that's it for this week's signal in minute. I know this is a little bit of a longer one. There's kind of a lot of things happening, especially the Battlefield Six is kind of great news. But yeah, anyway. Thank you very much to my Kofi supporters for supporting my work on making these videos, making Gozen and all my other stuff. Thank you very, very much. And yeah, subscribe if you want to stay up to date. This Signal Emitted episode is a weekly news series for Godot related news. If you want to stay up to date, please click subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.